Lord, praise the name of Jesus in this place. Welcome, welcome to church. Hallelujah. Please bring your faith, bring your expectations over to this technology because every joint is going to supply and we are going to have a great time together in the presence of the Lord today. Welcome, welcome, welcome to church. This is Church at Hero Smart. And Hero Smart is a ministry set up by God for the discipleship of the nations. In keeping with the instruction of Yahushua in Matthew chapter 28, which says, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you to do. And lo, I will be with you till the end of the age. And in trying to keep this instruction, this ministry, God's given us the great privilege to create a resource through which we can do that very well. And that resource we've titled the Online Discipleship Program, or the ODP in short. And now the ODP is a set of studies from the Word of God, which may be sectioned into five major categories. The pharmacy section of the Word, the milk section of the Word, the meat section of the Word, the water section of the Word, and combination meals. And in coming through this 2022 ODP, we're getting started with the pharmacy section of the Word, which we actually started last week. We've come through the first week, the first section of it, called Pharmacy 001, which is going to be defeating negative addictions. And we're going to go straight into the second section of the Pharmacy section of the Word today, which is going to be the Overcomer's Secret, Part 1, today, in this lesson today. Bless the name of Jesus. All right. Well, the pharmacy section of the Word are going to be certain concepts of the Word of God that we can use to restore our attitudes back to the status of the original design. And the restoration of our attitudes back to the status of the original design, of course, is going to start with the DNA message, which we preached, uh, talked about last week, defeating negative addictions. Uh, so if you haven't gotten a chance to listen to the DNA, please, please, it is literally the DNA of discipleship. <laughs> That's what it is. Because it's going to get you back grounded into what we call the status of perfect obedience. If there's anything in your heart that you've been harboring as treasons against the living God, that message is going to help you quickly get rid of it. Why? Because there is no tolerance of treason in God's creation. Um, and that's the way God is. <laughs> um, um, unfor fortunately, unfortunately. And I believe fortunately because creation was designed, as we are going to start to see today, to react against treason. If, if you harbor treason in your heart, you're going to see things are going to start breaking your circumstances. You're going to start breaking your circumstances. Afflictions are going to start escalating in your story. So, we, so, we, so, so God has helped us in this ministry by the grace of God. We don't play with treason. We don't play with it. What is treason? Treason is going to be a violation of a commandment or a sin. Sin of commission. We're going to delve deeper into the different categories of sin. But the particular action of rebellion, which is violation of a commandment, uh, is what we call treason. And you want to say no to it starting from the beginning of the year and sustaining that status for the rest of the year, for the rest of your journey, actually for the rest of eternity, because that's the way you were made. You get rid of treason, your body's going to work right. Your mind's going to work right. Your will's going to work right. Emotions going to work. Everything is going to work right. Uh, that's the way the Father created His creation. That's the way God made you as well by the grace of God. So the pharmacy section, in other words, is going to help us to restore our thought processes the way we think back into a status that will make it easy for us to sustain that status of zero treason. Because as we journey on, especially um, as we grow up as adults, we lose, we, we have a tendency to lose that status. Uh, and the status of a good heart, which we are going to be delving deeper into in the study, actually, we were born with. Why? Because we were born as godless spirits, as children. And the word of God says that the angels are children, little children, behold the face of the Father. So it's important to understand that tact the way you were. You weren't created with treason. But at the end of accountability, because of the death in your physical body and in your soul and your circumstances, 
and due to lack of training, the nature of death rebelled against the nature of God in your spirit as a godly spirit, and then you died and became an unrecreated human spirit. And subsequently, uh, all through the years, that nature of death right now in your spirit and soul and body is starting to train you to think like Lucifer. Uh, but fortunately, you got born again. <laughs> But your spirit got born again, your mind, your will, your emotions didn't get born again, and your body, for the most part, still has the residue, the residue of the nature of death in it. And then there are going to be challenges on the outside, which will make it real difficult for your spirit to flourish, except you get trained. Now, when you get trained, and that's the reason for the ODP, it is your responsibility right now to start to correct those ways of thinking over there. So the thought processes of Lucifer, ever since the age of accountability, Lucifer is trying to, t t trying to train you to see the world upside down. Well, through this training, especially through the pharmacy section of the word, you're, you're going to start seeing the world the right side way right now. So the way God created the world to operate is actually based on honesty, is based on humility, is based on faith toward the living God. But Lucifer's ways of operating is backward, is downside. It's going to train you to think dishonestly, to refuse to admit to the facts that are presented in front of you, to be arrogant and pompous and dishonest and, you know, all those kind of nasty attitudes. We get trained because of the influence of the nature of death, but you got to untrain yourself on purpose, and that's the reason for the pharmacy section of the world. It's the very first thing we got to go through in the ODP every year because when you fix those attitudes, then you stay open to the grace of God. You stay open to the mercy of the Lord. And with grace and mercy, there is no mountain that you will not level. Hallelujah. There is no valley that you will not feel. There is no crooked path that's not going to be straightened up in front of you if you have sufficient grace Sufficient mercy. But the way to stay open to grace and mercy is through increased honesty, humility, and faith. Lucifer knows that. God knows that. But most of our Bolivian brothers and sisters in the Lord are completely oblivious to it. <laughs> and they fight in the territory full of outlaw spirits who all report to Lucifer. Who knows? If you get access to grace and mercy, you will smother his operations the planet. So what's Lucifer going to try to do? Keep your eyes closed from honesty. Keep your eyes closed to see humility properly and twist the concept in your mind and make you disbelieve and over there's going to jump over there and keep you bound to the law of sin and death. But bless the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit is going to wrap his tail and kick him out of our lives today by the grace of God through the pharmacy section of the word, which we started last week. The DNA message is really, really important. Please and please lay your hands on it. And we're going to go straight into the second section of the Pharmacy of the Word, which is the Overcomer's Secret Part 1. The Overcomer's Secret Part 1 is going to be the first section of the book that we wrote to the ministry a few years ago. Here is the book. Uh, it's a foreign something paged book. Uh, it may be ordered anywhere online. It's really, really, really cardinal to the pharmacy section of the ODP. Uh, and it may be sectioned in five major categories. The first part of it is titled Understanding Laws and Systems. The second part of it is going to be titled Get an Inside Christ. The third part of it is the mercy aspect of the overcomer's secret, uh, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, the lot soul. I think that's what we called it last year. Lot soul, mercy. The fourth, the fourth part of it is going to be the lot soul, grace. And the fifth part of it is going to be carrying on just like you started. So it's going to be really important, or, or what, what is next? I think that's what we call section five of it. So it's going to be really important. If you get a chance, please pull it up. And I know lots of you have your copies right now. You're going to pull it up. We're going to study one more time. Bless the name of Jesus. Oh, boy, I thought we started it last year. Correct, we did last year. But you know what? You're going to study it again. Why? Because it's going to infuse certain spiritual nutrition to your spiritual systems. To restore your heart back to the status of the original design. When I'm talking about your heart right now, I'm talking about your thought processes. Just like I said a few moments ago. What's the meaning of that? I'm talking about the way you think. I can't stress that enough. The way you think as a human being. 
create and as a recreated human spirit right now. No longer as an unbeliever or a recreated human spirit. You're going to see an unbeliever out there, you know, the way they're going to think, you're going to wonder, why? How can you think like this? It seems like he just came from another planet. Well, really, that's true. They came from another planet. <laughs> the way <laughs> the planet they came from is actually from hell. They came from hell. That's the way people think in hell. They think in dishonesty, they think in arrogance, they think in unbelief and fear and all this kind of nasty attitudes. That's the way they think over there in hell. But in heaven, people don't think like that. So you want to make sure you're thinking like the way people think in heaven. But all through the course of your journey, working with the carnal and the unbelieving, they're going to think, they're going to train you. They want to train you to think like people think in hell. So what are you going to do? Just lay and just, you know, drink your Kool-Aid and think like everything's going to be normal with your thought processes. No, you got to be on purpose, making a move to retrain yourself and making sure that you stay in the mode of thinking like heavenly people. The people in heaven, the way they think, honest, humility, faith, honest. Humility, you, you got to get that locking into your mind starting today by the grace of God. So the Overcomer Secret Part 1 is going to be titled Understanding Laws and Systems. It's going to be the first section of the book. So if you've got your copy, once again, please pull it up. If not, you're welcome just to watch the board with me. It's going to be there for you by the grace of God. And it may be a section into four major chapters. Chapter 1 is going to be titled Position for Victory. What's the meaning of that? Hang on, I'm going to tell you. Chapter 2 is going to be titled Natural Laws. Chapter 3 is going to be titled God's Ways versus God's Actions. And chapter 4 is going to be titled Spiritual Laws. Hallelujah. The Overcomer Secret. Laws that govern creation. We're going to be talking about the first chapter right now, which is Position for Victory. Why are we talking about being positioned for victory? When we're talking about being positioned for victory, we want to get people to realize that in the eyes of the Father, God does not see any man or any woman as the author of sin and treason and willful disobedience. Oh, so some, some people have, a, have an idea about how God looks at because God is a God of faith. He's not a God of doubt. He believes that he can reap a harvest of righteousness in you and in me. Oh man. Oh. Look at all the all the all the chaos going on in our world and in our lives, right? The Father still believes this. Yeah, he believes. Why? The reason he can do that is because of the statement I just made over here. He doesn't see you as the author of treason. And he's doing his best possible to make you to see yourself. Detached from treason, see yourself as a healthy branch of Yahushua who is going to bear a harvest of righteousness for his cause on the earth. That's the way he sees us. How do we know that? Well, we know that from the account of the book of Genesis in Genesis chapter 3, which is, uh, <laughs> which we capture as the hypothetical uh, story in the Overcomer Secret on page number 3. If you've got your copy of the Bible of, of the Overcomer Secret over there, you can turn to page number three. You're going to see a hypo, hypothetical, uh, conversational story, which is meant to be a little bit lighthearted, but it should teach you a lot of things about the way the Father thinks. And I'm going to read that story. I read it every year because it's fun and it's uh, very instructive. Let's take a look at it. Uh, page three of the Overcomer Secret. Position for victory. We titled the story The Ultimate Conversation. So here's, here's God talking right now. He says, Adam, where are you? And Adam said, I'm hiding in the trees because I'm naked. I'm scared of your presence. And God told him, Why? You weren't afraid just a few days ago. What happened to you? What happened to you? Did you eat from the tree I asked you not to eat from? And Adam said, well, the woman you gave me made me eat from it. <laughs> and God said, come on now, Adam. You were enjoying this woman prior to this time, but now the woman I gave you? Anyway, Eve, why did you make your husband dis disobey me? Well, Eve said, I didn't do it, Lord. 
The serpent made me do it. And God said, okay, I understand the root of the problem. I have successfully traced the roots of treason, the problem, to the old rugged serpent. So it is important and really, really instructed to understand that God traced past Adam's lack of responsibility, past Eve's naivety, into the serpent and is stuck right there. As we're going to read in the book of Genesis, you're going to see that the father didn't take a moment to go back and talk to, to the serpent and says, Hey, serpent, how come you fooled my people now? Um, I talked to Adam. Adam passed the bark over to Eve, and Eve passed, passed the bark over to the serpent. And you, you didn't see that? God didn't go back and start challenging Lucifer and say, Is Lucifer, how come you did that now? No. God knows, well, that's the source of treason over there. Now, that conversation is very comforting. To understand the way the Father thinks about you. So God created Adam, He created Eve, He created Lucifer as well. So God, if you weren't going to be, you know, very compassionate, you should have been compassionate to Lucifer. And we're going to talk about that story, how Lucifer um, doesn't have the kind of compassion that the Father has on the back of his heart to where he met. We're going to talk about that. But get to understand the way the Father thinks. You say, Adam, and Eve, you all disobeyed me. But come on, why? You shouldn't have done this ordinarily. No, no, this is not you guys. What's going on here? Why, why did you do this, Adam? Well, I, I didn't want to do it. And so the, the woman you gave me made me do it. Well, that's a stupid comment from Adam. You shouldn't talk to God like that. And but thank God, God's not going to be aroused. His emotions are really tempered by his character of KJR. <laughs> if he was like some of us. You're trying to help somebody, and they're spitting in your face, face like that. What you're going to do, you go slap their mouth, <laughs> make all their teeth fall out of their mouth. But the father wouldn't do that. He's a very, very, uh, very cool and composed fellow. Say, oh, okay, I understand. You're, you're emotionally hurt right now. Okay, come on. Eve, what's your problem? Why, why did you do this? Oh, I didn't want to do it. This is the serpent will make. Oh, okay, the serpent made you do it. All right. And then he starts going ahead to start issuing curses and subsequent consequences of our rebellion. Still out of love, not because he's ticked off right now. He's doing everything in a calculated fashion. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. I am still going to have my harvest of righteousness, but this is the way things are going to go right now. But look at our thought process. Now look at that thought process. It doesn't see you as the author of sin. It doesn't see you as the author of treason. How do you see yourself? How do I see myself? And Lucifer is trying to convince us that no, you are that sinner. You are that uh, rebellious person. You are the author. You are the one. You are the, the knocked down, broken down, disgusted somebody that is not good for God. So don't see yourself that way. Now, if you start seeing yourself the way the Father sees you, you will understand that really that thought process is going to put you on a pedestal for victory. That's the reason we title chapter 1, position for victory. Now, let's turn to Genesis chapter 3 right now. You are going to see what I'm talking about. One more time. Glory to the name of the Lord. Genesis chapter 3, this is the portion of Scripture where... The ultimate conversation of the overcomer secret uh, was uh, taken from. Genesis chapter 3 and from verse 6. Glory to God. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for getting wisdom, she's going to entertain by it. <laughs> it's a reason you don't want to live your life in the foolishness of entertainment. We talked about that last week. <laughs> you know, FDD starts with entertainment. Oh, it looks good. It could be fun. We'll leave your life like that. Well, anyway, she wasn't taught. Well, when the woman saw that the fruit on the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for getting wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made a covering for themselves. How many fig leaves are you going to sew together to make something real decent for yourself? Acting like idiots already. Look at us. Then the man and his woman heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God 
among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? And he answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. You see what treason is going to do to you. It's going to make you scared, afraid, and naked. So anytime you're getting afraid over there, oh, well, maybe there's treason over there. And that's the reason the Bible says that the righteous will be as bold as a liar. When you stand right with the Father, there is a boldness, there is a confidence that comes on you. That Wall Street cannot give you. They give you all the treasures in the world, Street, you're still going to be scared. <laughs> you get all the $15 trillion in the GDP of the United States, $30 trillion, I don't know what it is right now. They give it to you. You harbor treason in your heart, you are still going to be afraid. But you may not have a dime in your bank account, and there is no fear in you if you are right with the Father. Which one would you choose? Being right with the Father, because that makes you super rich. We're going to talk about that later. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, well, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit on the tree, and I ate it. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you've done? The woman said, well, the serpent deceived me, and I ate it. And so the Lord God said to the serpent, because you've done this, cursed are you among all livestock and all wild animals. Stop. Why? Why didn't the father give the serpent an opportunity to explain himself? See, he said, come on, why did you do this? Not? No, God didn't do that. Because God knows that's the offer of sin. That's the root of sin. That's the root of treason over there. And getting to understand where the father thinks is going to be important for you. If you're not born again, you're listening to me right now, you've got to understand that God still sees a treasure on the inside of you. And he's reaching out right now with his arms of love, calling you to give your life over to the Messiah who died 2,000 years ago to save you from your sins. And he is right there, right there with you. If you will call on him, whatever language you may be speaking, you may call him Jesus, Jesu, Yahushua. Which is his real name. Say, Yahushua, save me from my sins. The Father is going to be there. He's going to recreate your heart. If you are born again, and the lust of the flesh is defeating you, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, you're having challenges and all this kind of things, get into understand that this is really not the way I am. This is not me. Why? Because my Father doesn't see me this way. Yeah, well, the devil may be telling you, well, you're bound to that lost the flesh, lost the eyes. You can't. No! Don't let him talk to you like that. Choose your father's perspective. Choose to see yourself the way God sees you. I am now the author of sin. You get position for victory over that particular sin that is dogging your heels because of that change of thought processes. You are positioned for victory. God traced past our treason in the Garden of Eden into the serpent. Stop right there. You got to understand that Lucifer, Satan, once a prime angel, was driven away from the presence of God because of the evil and the rebellion of his heart. No human being qualifies to be called the author of sin. Lucifer, Satan, the enemy of God, is the author of sin. He conceived iniquity in his heart. Right from the beginning, he'd been sinning like that. He wasn't created to be a sinner, but he is the first person who conceived the idea of treason in God's creation. Prior to his conception of treason, everybody in creation was used to giving glory to God. Angels adored the Father. Creation worshipped the Lord of heavens. But Satan, once a prime angel, really close to God, started conceiving in his heart. Well, why is everybody worshiping God? Come on. Why, why, why can't somebody worship a Jew? I'm going to exalt myself and put myself in the place of the Almighty. He started conceiving that. And the father saw those thoughts in his heart. He said, come on, what, what are you thinking about? You don't think like that around him. He didn't go and yanked him out of his presence and he became the author of sin. Now, if we'd authored sin, God would not treat us like he treated Lucifer. But we're not the author of it, thankfully. We didn't start that process. <laughs> Glory to God. And that's the reason God can't help us out of it. So what are we talking about? How do we know all of this? Well, we know all of this based on the evidence of certain scriptures like Ezekiel chapter 28, 
Isaiah chapter 14, which are going to be documented in the Overcomer Secret as well, or in your Bible, if you don't have the Overcomer Secret right there with you. Uh, but you're going to see it right here in Ezekiel chapter 28. From verse 1 to 10 is a description of a physical king of Tyre. And then from verse 11 to verse 19 is a description of a spiritual king who was momentarily ruling over the physical entity of Tyre. And you're going to see that happen lots of times in the Bible. God's going to be talking about a physical entity and then he's going to switch over to start talking about a spiritual entity. Well, that's what's happening over here in uh, the book of Ezekiel. But to prove that point to you, I'm going to ask you to turn to Ezekiel chapter 28 from verse 1. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, say to the ruler of Tyre. This is what the sovereign Lord says, in the pride of your heart, you say, I am a God. I sit on the throne of a God in the heart of the seas, but you are a mere mortal, not a God. Can you see that in your Bible? So the fact that God is calling this particular enemy a mere mortal lets us know that this particular description from verse 1 to verse 10 is going to be a human being. But then if you start reading from verse 11, you are going to see the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, take up the lamb, and it's concerning the king of Tyre, and say to him, this is what the sovereign Lord says, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God, every precious stone adorned you. Cornelian, Chrysolite, emerald, topaz, onyx, jasper, lapis lazuli, turquoise, burial. Your cities and mountains were made of gold on the day you were created. They were prepared. You were anointed as a guardian cherub for so I ordained you. So you're going to know right now that he's not talking about a physical entity anymore. He's not talking about a human being anymore. He says you were anointed as a guardian cherub or an angel. So this angel over here, the Bible says, it was the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. He's talking about Lucifer. You were on the holy mount of God and you walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in all your ways from the days you were created till iniquity or wickedness was found in you. Through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence, and you sinned. See over there. It's the author of sin. So I drove you in disgrace from the mounts of God, and I expelled you, guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones, and your heart became proud on account of your beauty. So I, you corrupted your wisdom because of So I threw you to the earth. Really, really critical nuggets we can understand from Ezekiel chapter 28 over there in verse 11 to verse 19. The author of sin is this guardian cherub, which we know is Lucifer. He had a place of eminence in God's creation. God tossed him out of there because of the pride of his heart. And the place where God tossed him out of can be called Eden because the Bible says you were in Eden. And that Eden, the Bible says that he was close to the mount of God, to the throne of God. So Eden is not going to be in the Middle East, as traditional Christian theology <laughs> had uh, said for thousands of years before, or maybe a hundred, a couple hundred years. They can tell you, well, the Garden of Eden is going to be in the Middle East over there. So you're going to start going through the woods of the Middle East. Maybe I can see the tree of life, the tree of knowledge, good and evil. No, it's not there. Eden is not in the Middle East. Can you see over there? Eden is close to the mountain God. And Lucifer was there. And God cast him out of there. And then from this passage of scripture, you can see also that the place where God cast the devil to is the earth. So the devil was in Eden, and God cast the devil to the earth. Then Eden cannot be on earth. See, logical inferences. And you're reading the Bible with the lights of the Holy Spirit. Especially complete revelation of the 21st century, your revelation should be logical. Because God's the creator and the author of logic. But when you start reading the Bible and coming up with spooky ideas from the Bible, and there's no logic to it anymore, you know, something's awful, is it? 
And those kind of revelations, they could just get super complex. It's going to be up for one kind of illogical understanding upon another illogical understanding. And then you preach in the earth's atmosphere and you expect people to believe it. Come on. Well, dishonest people are going to believe that. And <laughs> traditional people, potentially, they're going to believe that. And then my, my people, unfortunately, the word of God says, are going to be destroyed because of my lack of knowledge. But not from me. Oh, you're just a stubborn boy. Well, you can call me a stubborn, but the Father justifies me because I'm trying to please the Father. If it's not logical, throw it away. They told you the Garden of Eden is going to be in the Middle East. The Bible tells you over there, Garden of Eden is going to be the Mount of God. And the devil was cast out of there to find himself on the earth. How can the Garden of Eden still be on the earth when God cast him out? Come on. You behave yourself right here. <laughs> Glory to God. Eden is not in the Middle East. It's the place that is close to the throne of God and the devil was there and God chased him out of there. And he found himself over here. So the earth right now actually is being the place where the devil had been living. For how many years? We don't know. Because we can't see the creation of angels in the accounts of the book of Genesis. In Genesis chapter 1, when God said he recreated, I believe that he recreated the universe. The earth and the heavens. Genesis chapter 1, God says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then the earth became without form, and it was void. And darkness covered the face of the deep. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Day 1, day number 2, day number 3, day number 4. You can see all of that. I'm going to challenge you. Find me a verse in Genesis chapter 1, where, which says that now God created angels and guardian cherub. You can't find it there. But didn't God create the devil? Yes, he created the devil because the Bible says over there that I made you as a guardian children. So that lets us know that the creation of angels predates the details that we can see in the book of Genesis. In Genesis chapter 1, especially starting from verse 2 downward, and by extension, the fall of Lucifer predates our entrance into God's creation. We were created on the sixth day. Angels were created prior to the recreation of the universe. Really, really cardinal thoughts, cardinal understandings you can glean just from the book of Ezekiel written it over here. Another cardinal scripture, of course, is going to be Isaiah. and Isaiah chapter 14, God gave Isaiah the same understanding that he gave Ezekiel. Well, how did Isaiah and Ezekiel know all of this? Well, how do know? God told them, and thank God, they documented it for us. Look at Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12 to verse 14. That's another reference to Lucifer, a son in the morning. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Out art thou caught to the ground? which didst to weaken the nations, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of them, I will sit also upon the mountain congregation. In the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the cloud, I will be like the most high. You want to humor yourself, you go ahead, you count the number of eyes in that story. It says, I will ascend to, to heaven. I will exalt my throne above the star. I will see upon the mountain. I will ascend. I, I, I want to be like the most star. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the peak. And that's going to be important for you to understand. So Ezekiel said that the devil was cast to the earth. <laughs> Isaiah says over here that Lucifer is going to be brought down to hell. So I'll let you know that hell and the earth are going to be really tightly close together, of course. And we know that. Hell is in the center of this planet. This planet is not your home. You are a stranger here. Who oh, without did we come over here? Exactly the same reason why Satan found himself here is the same reason why we are here. We should not be bound to this planet at all, even though God created us on day six of God's creation to govern all entities in this planet. But we should and we should not be bound to this planet. God gave us an escape shuttle to come here and do certain things and jet back up to the throne of God because our location and destination is actually Eden. But because of the fall, 
We got cast out of Eden and we found ourselves on earth. But the hope of Christianity, the hope of following after Yahushua, the Messiah, is to get our glory codes so that we are not going to be bound to the earth and to hell anymore. Hell is going to be located in the center of the earth. And that's the reason our scientists, through their <laughs> childish investigations, as they call it childish investigations, I don't care how many Nobel Peace Prizes you've gotten, your understanding of God's creation still pales into insignificance when compared to the understanding of the Creator who holds your breath. So everything you're doing right now, I call it child's play. And for your information, I'm a scientist myself. So everything we do right now, we call it child's play. I'm an innovator, I'm a technologist, I'm an engineer. So I understand what you're talking about, but everything we're talking about compared to the understanding, the most minute understanding of the Creator who holds our breath, child's play. And you're going to do yourself a lot of good <laughs> to give a lot of credence to the person who is more than enough, the Creator on the ends of the earth. By referencing the document that is given you in your generation called the Bible. And go to the Holy Spirit to understand His ways. Hallelujah. So when God says that hell and the earth are going to be tightly coupled together based on the evidence of Isaiah 14, Ezekiel chapter 28. Better believe it. Because if you don't believe it, you're going to get bound on the earth. And the earth and the hell inside is going to be tossed away to the lake of fire. How did you see that? It's in your Bible. If you have a copy of it. Yahushua said that the Son of Man is going to go into the center of the earth to pay the price for the sins of humanity. So when he died on the cross, he wasn't just buried in a tomb. His spirit and soul went down to the center of the earth, which is what we know as hell. He went over there, he preached the spirits in prison, he felt the torture of the flames of hell for you out of love, for righteousness, even though unjustly. He didn't commit any sin. <laughs> so the object of God kind of love is not justice. The object of God kind of love is righteousness. Some of our brothers are going to start, you know, Going left, right, and saying, Oh, well, I just made you on mercy. Just made you on, no, you don't made you on mercy. You don't made you on justice. You made you on righteousness. And whatever is needed to promote righteousness in God's creation, you may similarly not appear to be just and fair to you. But if it's going to promote righteousness, it's going to be fair in the grand scheme of things. That's what Yahushua did for us. He went to the center of the earth, which is hell. Uh, and we know that's where he went. And, you know, the hell couldn't keep him bound because the Father is satisfied right now. The Holy Spirit went over there, recreated his spirits. He preached to the spirits in prison the boat, in the bosom of Abraham. And boom, he got his resurrected body and he got out of there. Now, our scientists know that the center of the earth's crust, the lower you go down to the earth's crust, for some reason, the hotter it gets. They just don't know why. And for some reason, the, the, <laughs> the lower you go, the more you are going to see all the, all these things like crude oil start coming out of there. You say, come on. Boy. And we, we harness crude oil right now, destroy God's creation, destroy the planet. We do all kinds of madness with it. And just, just to let you know that really, maybe this hell is actually down over there. If you come to that conclusion, you're going to be absolutely correct because that's what the Bible says over here. Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 20. Put it together. You're going to see hell, earth, sin, cast out of there. Now, why is this information important? Now, this information is important because you've got to realize that uh, Satan <laughs> doesn't like this place. What he really likes is to be close to God, unfortunately. And God cast him out of his presence. But in the book of Revelation, the Bible says that Satan is back up talking, accusing you in the presence of your father. Let's, let's look at that scripture. Revelation chapter 20. Oh, so Isaiah 
and Ezekiel lets us know that the devil had been cast into God's presence. Revelation chapter 12, first. How come the devil is still doing this right now? Let's look at it. In Revelation chapter 12, hallelujah. And in verse 7, it says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. Stop and think a little bit. How did he get there? We read in the Old Testament, Isaiah, Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, the devil was cast out of God's presence in heaven. He found himself on the earth. But right here, the devil is going to be still in heaven. And Revelation chapter 12 hasn't occurred because the book of Revelation was written to document things that were going to occur post AD 86 and AD 96. Because that's the time that John the Beloved was given the book of Revelation on the Isle of Patmos. So Revelation 12 is yet to occur. And we know that significantly because the Manchild Company has not been raptured out of here. If you struggle with that, please listen to end time snapshots from last year. Well, Revelation 12 hasn't occurred, so it means the devil is still in the heavens, and Michael and his angels haven't started their fight with him just yet. But the deeper question you're going to ask yourself is, how come the devil is in heaven right now? Now, what makes him climb up to heaven is because he is leveraging the platform of the believer's authority to climb back up to God's presence to accuse you before your father. Now you're going to read it on. But he was not strong enough in verse 8, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now have come the salvation, the power of the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers, who accuses them before our God, day and night, has been hurled down. Look at that. He has a place, he has a portal that he uses to accuse you before your father day and night, and he's still going on right now in 2022. But how did he get that portal when God yanked him out in Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 20 as documented over there? He leverages your portal. Because you need to understand the, the, when, when God created human beings, he gave us access to his throne. But then when we fell, based on the accounts in the book of Genesis, we transferred that access over to the enemy of God. And he's going to leverage that infrastructure of man's treason to climb back up to God, to be taunting God, accusing you in the face of your father. And that's the way things were until Yahushua came. Now, Yahushua came and yanked off that authority, all authority in heaven and earth has been given over to me. Now, you go ahead and you do, you do business for me. You transfer that authority. So, I mean, this, does the devil still have a right to do that? Well... Fortunately, God did that, Yahushua did that, but unfortunately, he transferred the authority over to you and me, the body of the Messiah. Now, the body of the Messiah gets back into treason because we can't sustain the status of perfect obedience, and Satan leverages the same platform, the same infrastructure of treason to start taunting the Father again. Now, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, I am going to put it in a graphical form and make you see it, so watch with me. Can somebody see this funny picture over here? <laughs> All right, you're going to see in this picture over here that the, the Garden of Eden is in heaven, just like we've read in the book of Isaiah and in the book of Ezekiel. Okay, you're going to see the Garden of Eden is in heaven. And in the midst of the Garden of Eden, there are two trees. The book of Genesis talks about that. The tree of life, the tree of knowledge, good and evil. And the book of Isaiah and Ezekiel say that the devil, Lucifer, was in Eden. Can you see that? But then the Bible says he fell to the earth. Boom, he found himself over here on the earth. How long ago was that? How many years ago? Well, we don't know. But we know it was prior to our entrance into God's creation, right? We've proved that point. But all of a sudden, in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 12, we see this Lucifer right over here again. We see him over there in heaven, taunting God. Ah, uh, how did he get there? Well, you 
Remember, I understand that when you turn to the book of Genesis, you ought to see that God gave us authority over heaven and earth, literally from God's throne downward over here. God gave humanity authority to govern and to have dominion. But when you bow down to your adversary, you transfer your authority over to him. When you transfer authority and everything that authority holds in the realm of the spirit is for you, is for you to bow down to somebody. Once you bow down, you, you obey that person, you're going to give you... How do we know that? Look at the temptations of Jesus in the wilderness of temptation experience. Yahushua, uh, the devil took Yahushua to a high mountain I say, you, you go ahead and you bow down to me and I'm going to give you authority. But you know that's a lie. But inside a lie will be a truth. If you remove the distortion from a lie statement, you are going to deduce the truth from it. So even though the devil said that he was going to give Yahushua the authority if he bowed down to him, you can still snatch out the truth from that statement. What's the lie? What's the distortion in that lie? The distortion in that lie is the way you retrieve authorities by bowing down to your adversary. That's a lie. On the other side, if you remove that distortion, you're going to see, well, the way you actually retrieve authority is to unbow. And Yahushua knew that. You see, I'm not going to, fool, I'm not going to be fooled by a ploy, Mr. Lucifer. Get thee behind me. You worship the Lord your God alone. So that lets us know that the way is snatched Adam and Eve's authority in the Garden of Eden was by simply obeying it rather than obeying God. Can you see how this is working right now? So he snatches the authority and because of that right now, Eve regains access to God's throne. Well, maybe not exactly God's throne, but to a place where it could be taunting God. Because we have access right from below the throne down to the second heavens, down to the earth, and God gave us an equipment to shuttle back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's what happens over there. Now, when, when Jesus came, he yanked off that authority, but unfortunately transferred it over to us. And we still, we're still battling with trees, electron and sand, proud lot, most of the flesh, still bowing our knees to the devil. One more time. And then he's going to leverage that platform, that same infrastructure, to still be taunting God and taunting you in the face of your Father. And that's what's still going on in 2022. So the believer who's going to be educated is going to do his best possible to sustain the status of zero tree and say, no, you're not going to use my portal anymore. You're going to yank your portal away from Lucifer and his adversaries and his chaos and, and, and his cohorts so that they don't use your portal to be accusing you before your father and get a permit to afflict your circumstances. Real stuff. All right. This is graphic help, help somebody. <laughs> this, this, the Lucifer is in pursuit of that tree of life, but God blocked him with those two angels over there. The Bible says he's placed angels with flaming sword. This is God's not smart. I'm smarter than you. All right. So lock this graphic in your mind to understand what is at stake when you harbor truth in your heart so you can get rid of it. And understand forever perfect obedience, zero truth by the grace of God. All right. We're going to have more, more fun. Stay on board. Glory to God. So it is important to understand how the fall of man transpired, uh, what makes that fall really, really egregious, if you want to put it that way. <laughs> and we got to learn lessons from it so we do not repeat that falling. Even though lots of our brothers and sisters, they don't really care about that because they haven't been taught. But this is discipleship. You're getting taught, you're getting taught, you're getting trained right now. I'm not going to let the devil leverage my portal to be accusing me before my father. I'm not going to bow down to that Lucifer anymore. Glory to God. I'm going to bow down to you. Satan, I cast you out of my portal. Why? So I can have a free channel through which the angel of God can go and come to bring speedy answers to my prayers. That's the way you should be thinking right now. Saying to God by the grace of God. So understand that you are positioned for victory. Man's refusal to recognize and respect the laws and systems that God placed in motion killed him and his wife. The word of God says that in the day that you eat of this tree, you are going to die. And when God is talking about death over there, he's not talking about the cessation of physical existence. 
He's talking about a separation from his life and a separation from his presence, because that's exactly what happened. Uh, so when we understand this is the way God, God thinks about humanity, and he's placed certain laws and systems in creation to govern his creation, in motion to govern his creation, then you are going to be in better positioned to return the devil's property of treason back to the devil and stay on the positive side of the laws and systems that govern creation. How do we know laws and systems govern creation? Well, we wrote the whole book to explain that point. But actually, there is a scripture, just one snapshot of scripture that's going to knock it down for you. Jeremiah chapter 33. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jeremiah chapter 33 in verse 20, 25. This is what the Lord says, If I have not established my covenant with day and night and fixed laws of heaven and earth, then I will reject the descendants of Jacob and David my servant. No, it goes on. It says, I established laws of heaven and earth. So they are laws and stipulations that God has established for heavens and for the earth. And those laws are not going to be violated just simply because, oh yeah, we are the treasure of God's heart right now. It's going to override his laws. No, God doesn't behave that way. But when we get to understand that I am going to treat God's laws with respect and treat them with, with, with proper respect right now, then I'm going to stick on the positive side of that law. And that's the second part of being positioned for victory. God doesn't see humanity as the author of sin. Is created laws and systems to favor you, not to hurt you. And we start talking about in chapter 2, different kinds of laws on the earth that we come to appreciate as human beings so that we can have a platform to appreciate laws of the spirit. We talked about different laws in chapter 2 as natural laws. Uh, there are laws and stipulations in the realm of natural that we've been accustomed to respect, like the law of gravity, law of electricity, law of seed time and harvest. And these laws were actually stipulated by God during the recreation of the universe. When God said in the book of Genesis, let there be light, that's not God creating the sun, the moon, and the stars. The sun, the moon, and the stars were not created until the fourth day of creation. When God said, there, let there be light, and there was light, and the light dispelled darkness. Was there illumination? Correct, there was illumination, but something deeper was going on. That was the establishment of natural laws. Law of electricity was, was, was configured when God said that. Gravity came into place when God said that. The law of thermodynamics was, came into place when God said that. Energy conservation came into place when God said that. All these little scientific discoveries that we started stumbling on ever since seal one got opened everything came into place when god said let there be light and order how do we know that jeremiah 33 25 we just read that scripture right now god established laws for heavens and the earth you gotta understand where laws operate in the realm of natural we have come to respect certain laws like the law of gravity when you understand this is the law of gravity right now, you're going to treat that law with respect. In other words, you're not going to jump off a skyscraper and then try to prove that you're a superman or something like that. You're going to break both legs. The law of electricity. We've been accustomed to respect the law of electricity. We see all these high-tension cables near homes and communities. It's they're, they're really high up in the sky, so nobody can get some random experimentation nerve to try to climb that. No, you don't do that. You get close to that high tension cable over there, you, you go smarter, you don't key around. And we've been trained to be a custom. Don't you mess around with laws. The laws were not designed to kill you, and the electricity was not designed to kill you. It was designed to bring you comfort, to give you technology. This internet call we're doing right now is because of electricity. But if you do not treat those laws with respect, those laws can smother you. And we establish those laws, God, which scripture says that. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 25. It's important. So there are laws on the earth which God created not to hurt humanity, but to position you for victory. 
You gotta find what those laws are, are and position yourself to be on the positive side of those laws by the grace of God. And then in chapter three, we started talking about the fact that there are going to be certain laws like that in the realm of the spirit. Those laws in Bible terms were called God's ways, and they govern God's actions. What are God's ways? God's ways are going to be principles and systems and technologies that guide his actions. And Moses understood God's ways because he cried out to be taught God's ways. Exodus chapter 33 and verse 13 talks about that. The word of God says in the book of Psalms, in Psalm 103, that Moses was taught the ways of the Lord, while the rest of the community just knew about the actions of God. Well, the word ways is going to be another word for laws and systems. Those are spiritual laws and systems, the way God operates. He's established certain things over there that are going to operate this way. And he is not going to change his mind just because I refuse to learn. Well, I refuse to get in compliance and be on the positive side of those laws. Or because I don't like the way the law smells. When I don't like the law of sin and death, I want the law of sin and prosperity. Well, there's no law like that. The law of sin and death was created by God in the book of Genesis. Where God says, in the day that you commit treason against me, you are going to die. That's the law of sin and death. The devil didn't create the law of sin and death. <laughs> Because the devil himself is trapped in the law of sin and death. They can't get out of it because there is no redemption for him. The law of sin, which is the law of sin and death, treason and death, says if you commit treason against me, there is going to be death, a separation from my presence, a consequence of that. You can't change it. Just like you can't change the law of gravity. Well, I don't like gravity. I want to be able to float and, you know, you cannot. You cannot change it. What is your response to the law of gravity? Your response to the law of gravity is how can I stay on the positive side of the law of gravity? I am going to respect the law of gravity. I'm not going to jump off my roof. I am going to eat and expect the food to go into my belly because of the action of gravity. I am going to treat the law with respect. Well, the same thing you should be thinking with God, the law of sin and death. I don't want to die. I don't want to be disconnected from the life of God. Then stay away from treason. That's the way you should be thinking if you are going to respect the law of sin and death. But the body of Christ, <laughs> for the most part, says, no, sin, sin, no, there's no death over there, no. Or even if it causes death, it's going to be, no, just uh, a little disturbance of my peace over there, and I can harbor that and still praise the God of heaven. No, you just don't believe that law. You're not a believer in that mode, no. I'm going to believe that sin is going to cause death. So I'm going to get rid of it quickly. Oh, but if I fall into treason, what's, what's going to be there for me? The blood of Jesus is going to be there for you. Hebrews 9, 13, and 14. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. Quickly get rid of it. Why? Because you are an ardent believer of the law of sin and death. And then there is going to be another spiritual law that we call the law of spiritual life in Christ Jesus, which was designed to set you free from the law of sin and death. And we talked about that in chapter 4. Talking about the different spiritual laws in God's creation. There is the law of giving and receiving. The word of God says, giving and shall be given back unto you. Whoever sows to the flesh is going to reap from the flesh. Whoever sows to the spirit will reap from the spirit eternal life. And there is the law of sin and death. And of course, there is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And we dedicate the rest of the book to unraveling the intricate details of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which we are going to call lots of. Spiritual laws and spiritual systems created by God to position humanity for victory so that you can govern the adversary. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He places a table before me in the presence of my enemy. So go govern that boy over there. And he's not going to give you that assignment without giving you the necessary tools to govern that boy. And that's the reason to establish the laws. But then you got to respect the law so you don't get hurt by the law. And bless the name of Jesus, we have been hurt by the law before because of sin. But right now we're getting rid of treason, giving that treason over the property of the devil, back to the devil, because he is the author of it. 
and he deserves the worst of hell he can get for it. But bless the name of Jesus, you're not the author of sin. Iniquity is not found in you. Iniquity was not found in me either. Return the devil's property back to the devil. Come to the come back to the camp of the Father who loves you. Stay positioned for victory. Identify the laws that govern creation. Stay on the positive side of those laws by the grace of God. Hallelujah! Glory, glory, glory to Jesus. The Overcomer's Secret, Part One. Did you get something from it? I believe you did by the grace of God. Next week we're going to do the Overcomer Secret Part 2. It's starting to talk about how to get inside Christ Jesus so that the law of the Spirit of life can start a function for you and for me by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to Jesus. The Overcomer's Secret Laws that Govern Creation. If you haven't gotten a copy of the book, please and please avail yourself for it. You Maybe purchase on Amazon or and on different places all around our online stores by the grace of God. All right, as my custom is, I am going to give a view an audience who may not know the Lord an opportunity to connect with the Savior who is reaching out for you right now. Just like I said before in that sermon, He is reaching out for you. He doesn't see you as the author of sin and iniquity. He traced past our rebellion in the Garden of Eden into the devil and Lucifer, and he stopped right there. He's calling you right now. Come on. Come on. Why? Because you were created in the image of the Father who's calling you right now. And I am going to read to you right now the most complete salvation scripture that I can find in my Bible. It is found in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. Well, this passage of scripture lets us know what it takes to make it over to the kingdom of heaven. You've got to call Yahushua, Lord. And then start to leave to please the Father. If you would like to make that decision, I am going to lead you in a prayer right now. You can pray this prayer with me and come on board and join the rest of us. Hallelujah. So say it right after me. Say, Yahushua, I realize that I've been a sinner living by my wits and powers, refusing to call you Lord. And I repent of that right now. I ask you, please, save me from my sins. I believe you are the Messiah who died and who was resurrected from the dead to save me from my sins. Please, Save me from treason, iniquity, rebellion is not my property. I return it now to the devil. Please give me a new heart. Recreate it to please the Father. And with your grace and mercy, I am going to leave. Please the Father and make heaven my home. Thank you for saving me. I am born again, recreated in the name of Yahushua. Amen. And amen, amen. Congratulations. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, welcome to the family of God. If any man is in Christ Jesus, and a woman in Christ Jesus, he or she is a new creation. The old nasty just died right now. A new species, a new hum human being, a new creation just emerged as a consequence of your exercise of faith. If you did that in faith, I want to let you know congratulations to you. Welcome to the family of God. Now, if you said that prayer with me, you made that determination with me, I'm going to ask you, please let me know about it. 
Send me an email at inquiry at herosmart.com so that we can send resources to you free of charge. Post paid, you're not allowed to pay anything for it. I'm going to send you, um, I'm going to send you even one of our books, which is actually the very start of the ODP over here called Defeating Native Addictions. I'm going to send you this book electronically. But send me an email so I can send it over to you. You come on board with the rest of us and start to learn how to be a disciple, fruitful disciple of the Lord Jesus. I want to say congratulations. You'll see that email there on your screen. Inquiry at heroesmart.com. Please, please, let us know about it. Hallelujah. Welcome to the family of God. Glory to God. All right, for the rest of our brothers, uh, we may want to take a couple of the study notes on the board. I'm going to step aside from the screen for just a little bit right now and give you about 10 seconds to pause your device and take a copy of the study notes on the board. And I will be back right after 10 seconds. Started notes on the board. I want to thank you for staying on board with us. This is the Overcomers Secret Part One Pharmacy section of the online discipleship program for 2022. Thank you for staying on board. We're not done with the ODP. We're going to go right on next week. So we'd like to see you back. I want to thank you for staying on board. And remember, God cares about you, and so do we. Stay blessed in the name of Yahushua.